Good morning, guys. Just getting ready for the day here. Uh, Ed Ballou is coming and Flavio Ramirez from Aquascape. Uh, they'll be here soon, 8 o'clock ish, 8 30. So we're going to get ready and get this uh, day going and we're going to finish this pond today. Well, finish the structures of the pond, the, the wetlands, the you know, the waterfalls, the rivers, that kind of stuff, the skimmers. We're going to get all that finished today. So uh, hang in there. Bear with us on this construction videos. <laughs> Still trying to show you fish. This is my Zaire Frontosa collection. And uh, what a night it was yesterday. <laughs> we had gotten so much done, it was unbelievable. But we're ready for today. Let's get it started. Our skimmers are located there and if we have the discharge here this side so what's going to happen is that water is going to dump in and it's going to want to go right back over there so this third over here is probably going to be pretty slow okay so we're going to we're going to want to get some water discharged here and possibly even into that corner because that corner is going to be and that's exactly where well. we put both power heads pumps. okay all right <laughs> so then we'll then that's good so by adding in more water right where those power heads is you know, it, it'll help just kind of push everything. So, baby, you want to take water from another skimmer over there and yep. then run it over to here? Run it over into here. All right. So we got to dig a trench or something? Yeah. You got to know that ahead of time. I would have put the, pump, the hose down. Well, that's that's easy though. You know, I mean, that's that's not a hard. Really? Yeah. Everybody who wants to dig shovel trench, put your hands up. Yeah. I don't, I don't see no hands. I don't mind doing trenches. Like I'm holding the camera. Again. I don't mind doing. Trenches. I'm just saying it's. Yeah, it's, it's I it would, I, if I'd have known, I'd have done it the other yeah. way. We got Richie digging the the, the skimmer out. How you like working on ponds, Rich? Don't like it, huh? We got Ed now here playing with the water now. <laughs> it's not Josh. Even the camera guy's working. Look at this. We gotta get our hands dirty. Flavio to the rescue. Okay, you can go ahead and start it again. You can just drop it down. There you go. Where's all the people who were supposed to show up and help, Josh? It rained. <laughs> it rained. <laughs> all right, we're now leveling out the skimmer. We're just taking gravel out of the bucket, and putting it down in there. Excavation's almost complete. We're fine tuning the level. Uh, we got some little crushed gravel going down in the bottom. But you can see because of all the rain, it's all muddy out here. We want to make sure that this is clean and dry because we have to have a watertight seal between the rubber liner and the skimmer faceplate itself. So it's going to be a compression joint. We're going to use a fish grade silicone inside of there, but we want to make sure that it's all nice, dry, and clean. Keep listening, kids. You'll learn a lot. Right, what are they? You said rushes? Yeah, there's a, there's a ton of different types of uh, bull rush. Uh, super, super hardy. They would grow like crazy inside Plants. of there, but they're just big grassy type things. And they would grow their roots in water? Oh, yeah. Okay, and what's the other one? Uh, sedges. There's a, there's a bunch of different carrot species. Okay. Um, there's arrowheads. There's pickerel. Uh, there's pennywort. There's, um, you, you can do uh, water forget-me-not. There's okay. a lot of different things that would take off in there. Okay, so now what we want to do is let's get that. We can use this level too. Looks like it's pitching back to you there, little Rich. It's level side to side. Yeah, that back end's got to come up. Or the gravel? Or the, well, well, if we, we do it, yeah. Things, we're probably pretty good. That's good still that way. Yeah, that's good. All right, so now what we want to do is let's get. Um, a little bit of soil around there just to kind of hold it in place. What I'm going to do is I'll step inside of it. Um, the reason I want to step inside because it. it's going to keep it from shifting. Otherwise, when we start filling you have it, any other dirt it'll get knocked is... out of there. Yeah, the clay? dirt we just no, it's all clay. Yeah, you don't have nothing that's easier to fill in. <laughs> no. no unless, we can use well, unless you want to try to dig, so if you want to dump and maybe dig a hole, so the clay will hold it better than that. So that stuff doesn't have. I'll take care of it. Come on. Yeah. Just take some of this extra dirt here. And, yep. I'd rather get some soil uh, for the sides. Take that off. About to get serious around here. You want me to put with this in your pocket or something? Here, I'll just hold it. 
Well, the more you screw it in, um, the tighter and tighter it gets, which is really good. It creates a really good tight fitting, but the problem with it is if you overdo it, it's almost like putting a wedge into a log. You will break this fitting. This won't crack, it'll pop that, and it will ruin your day because then you <laughs> gotta pull everything apart. So you wanna go hand tight, and then maybe one turn past that, and that's it. I see this has happened to you before. It has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely has. So we get a little silicone on here. It's gonna help lub lubricate everything. It's also gonna create a nice uh, seal for us. You could use pipe dope, you could use uh, pipe compound, whatever you desire, but I like to use that. Works out very well. Get that lined up. I love learning from other people that have already made the mistake. Make a mistake, yeah. You don't do it again. Oh, let's grab those uh, the orange or the red handle. Yeah, what, where there. will this run? So this is gonna feed our jet circulation. So we have two skimmers on here. One of them is gonna feed the wetland filtration system. The other one is just here for overall circulation. So by the look of this pond, we have the wetland over there on the top. The waterfall is coming in on that far corner. Um, I'm always thinking about overall circulation. So we want to have the skimmers at the exact opposite spot, which is where we have them. Waterfall is going to come in over there. All that water is going to want to go from point A to point B. So what that does, though, it's going to leave this spot over here kind of a dead zone. So Rich has already placed his pond power head in that location, but we want to increase that. So we're going to actually take a two-inch pipe, we'll bring it along that edge, and we'll actually probably split it off into multiple smaller pipes just to have that really nice circulation, push all that stuff, all the water, any leaf debris over here to the middle where, where it will get caught in the main current of the waterfall, sweep everything over into our skimmers. And that, that way we know that we're turning over everything really, really well. Uh, it's gonna give us our best water quality. Nice, didn't even think of that. What about uh, the power head now? Yep. Should, should we put both of them on the other corner instead of? Um, I think that could be a dead spot too. You said there's one over here as well? Yeah. Yeah, because that water is going to want to go from there to here. So and you're putting corners, all the re re recirculating over here. We're going to be recirculating there. So we don't need that power head we, over there then. We might, um, I think we probably, I think we should leave it. One on each corner then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it can just push everything to the middle. Gotcha. And then it will all get swept over this way. Yeah, it's actually, it is drying out pretty quick. Quicker than I thought. Jeez. Um, I'm just going to stand this rock up in front of this guy. Look at that, folks. 77 years old, still, still fit. I had that small rock for underneath the skimmer. Oh, I got gotcha. one on each side. Okay. So then, do you want? I think we can flip this around uh -huh. so it's angling down. Small rock. Get that. Let's, yeah, we can do that. So let me get this one out of the way. Okay, I got this one there. All right. Get this guy positioned. We need to position that one first. Uh, we got to get this one in the place, and then we can put that one up against this, right? Yep. Are you trying to turn that around, Josh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, grab under there to help him slide a little. Get it. Get him, sorry. Yeah. There it is. You tied up against that thing? Does the bottom need to go over a little bit more? Well, it still needs to go over. Flip it up like that. Yeah, so we can come over to you probably another. Or so. If you want to hold it up like this, I can probably grab the bottom. No? Yep. There it is, right there. Man, perfect. Almost made him look like a fit set. All right, Josh, that rock. How bad? You said I'll need no help. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to probably. Alright, shovel. Throw it anywhere else. That fill some dirt in there. Behind the liner. Yeah, put it a little more, a little more tighter.
And I stand it up this way, and I'll put it right in. Let's pull the top. Drop it in. Just like that. Yep. Yeah, then we'll be able to get the soil. Back in there. Okay, okay hold this uh, liner up. Yep. I'll kick some down behind there. Actually, go down a bit. I'm sorry. Make sure that we're protecting the rubber liner. So we have that fabric under the liner. We have the rubber liner. We're going to put another layer on top. And that's because we're going to be dumping tons, literally many, many tons of river rock on top of this. So we want to protect that rubber membrane from any damage. From there, once we start uh, getting that fabric in place, we're going to lay our centipede and snorkel down the, down the bottom. Now, normally what I would do is I would cut a trench down the bottom, but we don't have enough liner to do that. So what we're going to do, we have a flat bottom. I'm going to place my centipede kind of right down there in the bottom. This area on the sides of the centipede, we're going to fill up with a large river rock, which we have right over here. So we're going to fill up that void space with a large river rock. That'll give us a flat space to work off. And then we're going to place our aqua blocks on top of that. Once the aqua blocks are in place, then we'll come in with more layers of the large river rock. And then we'll slowly start to grade our way down to finer and finer river stone. What that's going to do, it's going to give us higher surface area, which is the all, which is the name of the game when we're talking about biological filtration. We want high surface areas. That's for microbial colonization. So we're right at the beginning stages right now. A lot of things are going to be happening. Fabric, gravel, snorkel centipede, aqua blocks, more gravel. <laughs> I have a video of Ed up in the ceiling. I have a, a oh, yeah. video of Ed talking to a drunk guy and trying to explain stuff to him. <laughs> now I have a video of Ed down in a hole and he can't get out. <laughs> you trap him, now you can just feed him every yeah, once in a while. Yeah, right? <laughs> I got the progress so um, And then we are going to need uh, probably some fittings. We're going to have to get that pipe up and over. Down yep. To this line. Yep. yep. <laughs> These two are pretty close to the same. Um, we got a level? We got one of those levels? Yeah. Uh, over there. Alright, Ed's about done down in there. We're making the last connection. I like how you can see the back of his head and on his shirt you can see the front of his face. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll pick up um, all your big grit. So large pieces of sand and that type of stuff will settle out there. The water then flows out these slots. We have 231 square inches of open space. If you add up all these little slots, that'll give us a flow rate of a gallon a second of water flowing out of it. Um, on top of this, once we get our gravel in here, we're gonna have a layer of aqua blocks. Once the water then flows up through that, uh, the water velocity drops down further. So those aqua blocks are nine inches tall. It'll take 10 minutes for the water to flow for all the way up through the aqua box and then it will come into contact with the gravel and then the interstitial spaces of the gravel is a lot smaller than this big void space so the water velocity picks back up as it flows through so it goes it starts to slow down then it really slows down in the aqua box and then it starts picking up velocity as it rises up through that the uh, reason it was designed like that it keeps it from getting clogged up so the water velocity kind of moves through so you have good connection with uh, with the bacteria microorganisms discharges repeats the cycle Okay, guys, this is exactly what and why Mr. Ed Baylou gets paid the big bucks. <laughs> so, Josh built a nice little ramp and it's working. <laughs> now he's not going to say no. <laughs> Just by agitating the gravel surface in various points throughout the wetland filter, you should see clear water flowing up from that agitated point. When that occurs, that means you know you have good water distribution. So what we don't want to have happen, we don't want to get like a hot spot. What I mean by a hot spot is you're going to have a lot of water blasting up in one place and it kind of creates a bubbling action on the surface. That's channelization, that's bypassing all your biomedia. What I want is I want a nice, even distribution of water throughout this entire system. That means I have good water contact with the, uh, with the bio media. Then from there, it's going to discharge out the end, which is going to be our waterfall. The key to this is 
dissolved oxygen levels have to be right. There's going to be a dissolved oxygen drop as the water flows through the biomedia. That's why we have a waterfall on the outfall. That's going to help to reoxygenate the water. So for, at this point, Rich, how high are we above the pond level? About uh, 10 inches. So 10 inches. So we'll have 10 inches of drop from water level to water level. That's going to help to agitate the surface. When we combine that with the different circulation jets that we have in here, we're going to be churning all that stuff up, and that's going to give us the desired water quality. So our next step right now, come in with more large river rock, the layer across over this entire system. Then we're going to come in with smaller layers uh, or smaller gravel um, in 8-inch lifts. Once we do that, we get better and better filtration. As we come up to the surface, the top layer is going to be the smallest gravel, and that's going to be for the planting medium. Alright, once we wash this down, we'll pump it all out, that dirty stuff, and then we can get the, the medium gravel. Okay. <laughs> Such a simple thing makes you so happy, Ed. Yes. <laughs> all the dirt We've been for water the whole time. <laughs> I want to make sure when, I want to make sure we're cleaning the pond, not getting it dirty here. <laughs> so getting all that mud out of there. Oh, it has been a muddy day. Yeah, it's That's the way it is, so this is what we got to do. Not to mention, I tried bringing the, the bobcat back here, slid sideways into the barn and took out four foot of gutter. You find that funny, do you, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> Now you don't level the layers in between, you just let them willy nilly just build up? We do. Oh yeah. you do? Yeah, so we have a mark on here, we went right up to our mark where we were supposed to. I'll throw a level on it, but we look pretty close. Yeah. So we were shooting for that one gap right here. Right there. That's right there. That's right there. All right, so we're washing gravel. That means the the wetlands filter is 50% done. We've got two more layers of different size gravel to go on. Got the snorkel add-on to add on. I'd say even a little more over 50%. We just got two more layers of gravel. Yep. Oh, and Josh, we got to cut that board and then, we got and then seam that, we got that liner. Okay, so would you say we got 60 to 70% work of the done today? Yeah. So tomorrow's going to be your first easy day in, what, eight years? Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, it's because the water coming in is faster than the water going out. Yeah. All right, so we're done. You got that shut up, Josh? We're done with rinsing the racks. Uh, you could bypass, so that's um, um, you, it'll bypass the controls. So the pl uh, plus or minus, the increase or decrease. Oh, so that's either off or on. It'll just bypass. It. All right, so Ed or Josh, let me ask you a question. The highest uh, flow rate. What's Ed's last name? Bela. <laughs> No, I was to informed today after I've been calling him Ed Baylou for what two years now, two three years. years, two and a half. I, I I've been calling him Ed. Ba I've introduced him on my streams, on my on my videos as this is the man right here, the Professor Ed Baylou, and he never corrected me. <laughs> Flavio come up to me and said it's actually blue, not Baylou, Baloo. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I hear it different everywhere. So it's just like, I just, I'm just like, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> That's like somebody introducing me as uh, Big Ricky. <laughs> That's not my name. <laughs> good morning, guys. Big Rich here. Uh, listen, this is the next day. Now, we've done already over 200 yards of dirt, and we've got another 30 60 yards coming today and I have a dump truck load in my driveway already that was left over from yesterday. <clears throat> we couldn't bring it back because of the, the rain. So I'm starting today. It's 7.30 out there. I'm hoping my neighbors don't get really, really mad, but I got to get it done and the truck's on its way so there's no room for him to dump the dirt. So I'm going to get back there and I'll keep on dumping and keep on video for you. Alright guys, the first truck load is here. It's about 8.30. I got rid of the whole other pile before he got here, so now this is all new dirt. It's a lot drier. Okay. See, I've been dumping dirt here, and my boy Rich has been leveling it, pulling up the liner, bringing it all the way into the rocks of the pond. And uh, you see Will Star holding up the liner there. He's doing it all the way across here. And Ed and Joshy are putting in the, there's two skimmers. And from the two skimmers, let me see where they're at, right there. That one goes to the wetlands filter. This one here goes through its own little filter right there and then comes over under the ground and then goes through the liner. And right here, it spreads out the four different jets pointing that way. So water comes in this way heads towards the skimmers and then the stagnant water over here is getting pushed that way so any leaves that fall everything will go into the skimmers doing a real good job and rich is doing a good job leveling um uh, yeah it's getting together and i've been just taking dirt and filling in over there all the way across Talk about what we're doing. okay so we have the pop structure here flavio and josh taking the pea gravel They've already filled up the, the filter pond to the top as far as they want it. Now they're spreading it out in the uh, stream here. As you see, Josh used the machine to grab the gravel from the back. Now they're getting out of the bucket and spreading it apart, spreading it around. So, you've got Flavio down here doing work. We have the Superstar Pond Professor here doing his thing. Superstar Josh and Superstar Flavio. <laughs> we caught that on video. video yeah, we did. <laughs> you forgot to raise funny. the bar up. <laughs> One of those moments, Josh. Glad it was on video. Yep. So what we're doing now, we put the final layer of pea gravel on top of the wetland filter. Uh, Ed and Flavio already rinsed it with this big, massive two-inch hose at the 7,000 gallon per hour pump. So they, they, they washed it, got all that silt and clay and mud out of the, the rocks. Now we went ahead and pumped everything out so we got all that dirty, nasty water out of here. Now we're pumping in water from the, uh, the pond to go ahead and fill this and dry run our river system here. We're gonna see how this first rock here, water falls off and see what kind of adjustments we need to make here. And then w once we get this all straightened away, we can move down, Good. get our, everything That's set in place, nice. and then we can start foaming everything. You can see we already placed a bunch of this pea gravel in the, the river. The, this is here just to take up any of the voids and dips. So now it looks nice and neat through here. You guys were doubting us, but now look at this stream starting to come together. There it is. We still have a lot of work, and now I mean a lot of work, to make the outside of this all nice and plants through here, plants through through there. But give, give us, you know, some time. It'll look very nice. Yeah, next spring, next summer, this place is going to look stunning around here with all the flowers and landscaping. Okay, we are literally seconds from seeing the first water run through this first dry run over this uh, wetland filter. 
Here we go. You see, see how slow and steady that water's rising up? That is the key, as that pond professor just told us next to us. Look at that. Now imagine this all filled with nothing but aquatic plants. Just nothing but luscious vegetation. Pretty flowers. That'll look pretty cool. We are getting there. It's starting to leak up underneath. Yep. Which we're not going to be able to fix that until we foam it. Which I'm wondering if it's going to have enough flow to go up and over the rock. Right now we're only pushing about 3,000 uh, gallons per hour through it. Or four. Uh, no, this is. It's all the way up. Okay. It's uh. It should be at six or so. That is a pretty fall. Actually, that's not bad for not having it foam. Or level. That would be awesome. You might not. You don't really need to foam it if you don't have to. You know what I mean? So we're still below your that edge, which is good. But we're right. We're right on it. We're right on that edge. No, slip a one by two under it. Ah, uh, yeah, no, I and mean, we want to keep that, right? Because this is where that seam is. We don't. Really now you can see it's filling up there. It's nice and yeah, wet, be six, and it's flowing down, slowly filling in all our small spots. And it's gonna hit this edge here. It's gonna fill up. We're gonna have to foam in this rock here, and then once it'll create another waterfall right off this edge here. Now we can wait and find out what happens with this rock. A few more seconds. Oh, it's already flowing over on that side. So we're going to have to foam in around those rocks over there. Not sure if we're going to have enough flow to get up and over this rock. Yeah, there's a lot of water going into that back side. Just now started hitting on this front side. And you can see it's pulling up here, which we wanted it to do. Now it's backing up all the way back to the wetland filter there. We've got probably another half inch before it flows off the top of this rock. Now what I wanted it to do here was come over this rock right here and create another small waterfall, which I think it'll actually do once we get this all foamed in and done correctly, of course. This is just a dry run. And it's going to do the same thing here. We have to foam in this whole rock and it's going to fall off the edge back into the pond. Let me come down here and... Oh yeah, I could probably... It's, we got this big old muck That's a little better. It's like Ed knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, well, we should that should be leveled and pull it up here. Okay, so the water's a little bit more stable now. Constant flow, all the small areas are filled in. We have a bunch of work to do with this rock here. We have to foam in the end. And you can see this uh, stream right here. It's coming together nicely. This will be kind of a deep stream here. But you have the little first waterfall coming out the wetland. A deep stream to a waterfall there. Small waterfall and then the big waterfall back into the pond. Well guys, it's the end of the day. Ed Ballou's left. Flavio left with him. Everybody else went home. It's just me and Josh here. Josh is trying to finish up this dirt as best he can. We're, the machine's got to go back and we're trying to Work out a deal to keep it for a little while longer. Oh yeah, this was all the way out to here, the end of our driveway. We destroyed the grass on the side of our house.
Alright, you guys might see that black dirt there and think it looks kind of crappy. Well, it does, but let me tell you something. That's some of the strongest dirt I've seen all day. I'm able to come up, I'm able to dump it, and then I can drive my bobcat right over where I just dumped, not worry about sinking, nothing. Really? That's some strong dirt. Hmm. Well, it's full of rocks and branches. And <laughs> what would I actually think that that is, is a river bottom where that they were digging, like next to a river or some sort of water. It's all mm. hot, highly packed, it's wet, and it's mud, rocks, so. Okay. What's your plan before this uh, day ends? Um, finish getting this nasty stuff up, take the dry stuff, grade, and... Oh, you want to do all this dirt before we quit? I'm going until the sun stops me. The, the rain tried earlier, I told him no way. <laughs> Wondered what happened to the rain. It started raining and all of a sudden it quit. Yeah. Alright, now over here, this is the highly compacted dirt, heavy dirt that he's talking about, which is really ugly. This is the nice, loose, light brown fill, and it's a whole lot lighter to carry on your bucket. It crumbles right apart. It's nice for filling in over top of this kind of stuff. So yeah, this is uh, a lot here. We have gotten so much of it. Look, our gravel driveway we put in covered in mud now remember this was three three piles of rocks here ouch <clears throat> we've got a little bit of this river rock left pea gravel all this has went in for the filtration so we've got a lot of cleanup to do pressure washing, scraping, all kinds of stuff. Not to mention this whole front driveway up here is going to be destroyed. And we're still not done with the dirt. We're, it's going to rain for the next week. So we're going to have to get another machine a couple weeks down the road and finish the uh, yard work to get it completely level and how we want it. Because we just don't have the time now. And if I keep the machine, then I'm paying for a whole week I think it's seven fifty a week, I'm paying for a whole week that is uh, we can't use it. <clears throat> Ground gets wet back there, and man, you slide everywhere. And then right next to this big old mess, you got this pretty little pond. <laughs> I love it. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're getting it work done. We we've, we've been busting butt every single day, all day. So, uh, I thought as soon as Ed left, Josh would want to take a break, but. He wants to get this dirt done before we return that machine. And, uh, you know, oh, this is uh, one of the plants Greg gave me. I have to bring that in for the winter. It's a tropical. The rest, they grow back every every summer. So, you guys like the content, please subscribe, share our video, and all over Facebook. Uh, and hit it, share it on your Instagram, however, but uh, it would help us. Appreciate it. And uh, until next time, stay fishy, my friends.